morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wasn't expecting to be back with you quite this soon, but it's a pleasure, and I'll be seeing a lot of you in the coming weeks, so hopefully we can get along well. Announcements are as printed in your bulletin. I'm assuming that there is Bible study on Tuesday and Thursday. Is that correct? Anybody know? I don't know. You don't know. I think Larry would probably be the one to contact to be sure about that. Um, he, Not on Thursday. What, say again? Not on Thursday. Not on Thursday. Just on Tuesday. Not on Wednesday either. <laughs> Okay, no Bible study on Wednesday or Thursday, but Tuesday is still in the open. We keep in our prayers this morning um, the people from Zion here who are either ill or suffering in some way and in need of prayers. I will not list those names during the prayers, but they are as printed in your bulletin. You will note that... Um, since I am going to be here on Sundays, uh, Stacy will be continuing in the office, and uh, she's a big help to me, and she knows what she's doing, so that's a good thing. And then you can contact Myrna Sharpie or Kevin Bierman if you are in need of pastoral services during the week. So please keep that in mind. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, let us begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness as found in your bulletin and on the screen, right? Oops. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O oh God, against you, you alone we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sins and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you. Renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. We sing our entrance hymn, Gracious Spirit. Hear our, hear our, repeat our pleading in your cranberry hymnal 401 or up on the screen. Hey! 
Our first reading is from Genesis 11, 1 through 9. The builders of the Tower of Babel try to make a name for themselves by building their tower to the heavens. God scatters them, confusing their language so that they cannot understand one another. The miracle at Pentecost is a reversal of sorts, drawing many people with many languages together into the new people of God. The text begins. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain, a plain in the land of Zinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitmen for bit mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole world. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible to them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34, and we will read it responsively. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with the swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Lavathan, which you made, the, made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Here Paul speaks about the mystery of baptism. Through the Holy Spirit, we are claimed, gathered, and welcomed into Christ's body, the church, and we receive a new name in our adoption, child of God. Text begins, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit being witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing. 
Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father, in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Is this louder? There you go. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry. I am a novice with <laughs> with the speaker. Um, we have a couple of children. I'm going to invite them up. You want to come up to the front? I have something to show you today. There's one way in the back row. Come way up here in the front. It's like running across a gymnasium, huh? For such little legs. How are you guys this morning? Good. Well, I brought something I think you'll recognize today. What does this look like to you? Candles. What kind of candles are these? What are they for? For a birthday cake. I brought these today because, did you know, today is the birthday of the church. The church has a birthday, just like you do. When is your birthday? March 12th. When is your birthday? November 20th, you're almost a twin sister to one of my girls. Her birthday is November 22nd. It's very close. My birthday is May 1st. And I'm getting older. <laughs> when we have a birthday, we like to have a cake, and we like to put these candles on the cake. And then what, what, what do we do when the candles are on the cake? We light them up and we blow them out and we make a wish, right? Maybe today your wish can be, maybe we will get an interim pastor soon, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought another candle today. Have you ever seen one like this before? Yeah. When do we see this? Christmas. At Christmas? Yeah. We also see it at baptism, don't we? This is kind of a, it's a Holy Spirit candle. This little P here with the cross, that's a sign for Jesus Christ. And here's the Holy Spirit coming down on this. We give it at baptism because the Holy Spirit comes to the one who's being baptized on their baptism. At least we celebrate that day as the day that the Spirit comes and we light the candle up 
and we tell you to go out and talk about Jesus. Tell everybody all about him. So today, for Jesus' birthday, I wore red. Red is the color for Pentecost, the birthday of the church. I have a sheet to give you. And this is a picture of Jesus coming to all the people of the church. They have little flames on the top of their heads. They look almost like the candles on a birthday cake. That's because Jesus came with flames, tongues of flames, and wind. And it was really a day of celebration. Thank you for coming up. I imagine today with flags of all the nations around the sanctuary and flames like this candle, like our baptism candle, on, on the end of every pew and burning. And I thought then we could add two great big livestock fans in the front of the church to indicate the wind and the flame and the coming of all the languages to the people so that they could understand. Maybe if I were living in Arlington, that could have happened, but I don't get up that early. <laughs> anyway, I did wear red because I thought it would be festive for the day. The color for today is red. And I brought my ordination stole. This is the one that was given to me 22 years ago this May by my supervising pastor. And this is a stole that was made in Guatemala. It has red for the season of, uh, for the day of Pentecost. We don't wear, we don't use red pyramids and a red stole very often. Pentecost is one of the few days that we do. Or the ordination of a pastor when the other pastors come and everyone wears red. It's a celebration Sunday. This one has various symbols for Jesus Christ and the Spirit, the cross, the wheat, the church, the fish, um, the crown. And um, I think it gives you a little taste of Pentecost is a festival for all countries in Babel. God sent the people scattering when he gave them all the different languages and they couldn't understand each other. But on Pentecost, the Spirit comes and they speak the different languages so that everybody can understand and be brought into the fold. Our text for today translates the name of the Holy Spirit as the Advocate. I'm not really satisfied with that translation, I will say. And the reason is I don't think it's complete enough. In the gr Greek, the word is parakletos, parakletos. And I think some of you will remember earlier versions of the Bible where the Holy Spirit is called the paraclete. The paraclete will come and will be to you an advocate, a teacher, a leader, an authority, um, a friend. I like to call the Holy Spirit an empowerer. I think the Holy Spirit comes to empower us to do ministry and to lead lives of faith. 
The Holy Spirit is often in commentaries described as one who stands beside. I like better one who dwells within. We have a Holy Spirit who is indwelling. The Holy Spirit dwells in us from the very moment a baby is born. Some of you have been in those delivery rooms, as have I. There's this quiet hush of a moment when the baby is born, while it draws its first breath, its first pneuma, as the Greek says. And then the baby lets out a cry, and the busyness begins. The baby gets put on the mother, the cord gets cut, the nurses take it, clean it off, measure the head, measure, measure the body, weigh it all. All the flurry begins. And that's kind of the way Pentecost comes to us. We're in the quiet after Jesus ascends. And the disciples, they don't know what to do. Even after Jesus ascends, they're in the house thinking, what do we do now? You have to remember they were basically uneducated men. They didn't have the benefit of Bible study or seminary or Sunday school. They didn't have the benefit of much school, if any. They probably couldn't read or write. What do we do now, they ask. Well, then in Acts, God rolls in. And God rolls in with wind and tongues of flame and different languages. And then they're given direction. And they move out in a flurry to tell the people in whatever language they speak about Jesus Christ and his saving action for them. In the German, some of you probably remember this, Zion does have German roots after all. I grew up in a German congregation, Trinity, south of Gielard. Um, the Holy Spirit was called Der Heilige Geist, is that right? Der Heilige Geist, the Holy Ghost. And in the earlier versions of the Bible, lots of times, the Holy Spirit was translated as the Holy Ghost. When I was a kid, I kind of wondered why we were talking about a ghost in church, but that's beside the point. But anyway, I like the word spirit because spirit indicates to us a power that is with us, in us, and also a power, a spirit that comes out of us to tell us about Jesus, to keep us on track, to make sure we keep moving ahead in faith, to make sure that we share our faith. These are some of the fears of the disciples and maybe some of our fears as well. The disciples were probably asking, how do we know what we're to do now that we no longer have Jesus as our teacher? How are we to find the energy and power to carry on Jesus' mission if he is not by our side, motivating us and encouraging us? How are we ever to find a sense of peace and satisfaction in our work if we don't have Jesus around to tell us we're doing it right? Do any of you ever question whether you're acting out in your faith in the right way? Or am I the only one that's plagued by that? Then I have to rely on the Spirit. How strong, how powerful do you and I feel on this Pentecost Sunday? 
Pentecost exploded with wind, fire, and holy breath, promising a new wild freedom and intoxicating joyride. Have you ever thought of your faith as an intoxicating joyride? It's kind of exciting to think so. I want to share with you this morning a poem. This is an old poem. When the day of Pentecost had come, crowds had assembled many countries from, and there came a sound from heaven's gate like a mighty wind that changed men's fate. And there appeared to them tongues of fire while angels sang in the heavenly choir. Out of the heavens the Spirit spilled, and they spoke many languages as the Father willed. That's the beginning of a poem. The end of it, I think, is lost to antiquity. I wrote it as a 14-year-old for my Sunday school teacher, and I'm sure it was written with a pencil on notebook paper because that was before my days of typing and before the computer came into existence. And somehow in the 15 moves that I've had since then, it uh, has turned up missing. But I read it today because as a 14-year-old, my, my Sunday school teacher made me get up in church and read it to the congregation on Pentecost, and I was scared to death, scared to death. I've been an introvert all my life. I am a back row sitter. I am a don't call on me person. I am a, I don't want to be noticed. I'll just take in what, what's coming here, but I, I, don't call on me. Don't make me stand in front of people. And this was my argument with God when I was first called to ministry. I can't do it, God. I can't do it. I'm, I'm basically a chicken. And I am an introvert to the far end of the scale. I was always a quiet child, withdrawn. My mother thought I would never learn to talk. But one day, God spoke these words to me from Isaiah 42. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to give sight to the blind, to bring the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I didn't know where that verse was found in the Bible, but I, I happened to be walking along the ditch back bank of our farm at the time, and there, was, there were trees along there. And I came home, and I opened the Bible right to the page. And um, the words have stuck with me ever since. I was ordained 22 years ago in May, and the words are still very real to me that for some reason God was calling this introvert scaredy cat to get up in front of people and to share the good news. In 1993, I was uh, painting the murals in the fellowship hall, the Christmas ones that hung on the church for a number of years, and then I heard that they were being used for the float. I, I'm not sure if they're even in existence anymore. But my days were really full between 
doing cattle chores and teaching and raising three kids, but every night after chores and after I made sure they had their homework done and were in bed, I'd come here to the church and I'd paint from like nine till midnight. I'd wash up my brushes and I'd come and sit in the front pew in the dark in the church. The only light coming in was maybe a little bit of light from a street light, maybe a sliver of light coming between the folding doors and the eternal light that was burning in the front of the chancel. And my anxiety was through the roof. I did not know what to do about this call to ministry. I didn't know how it was ever going to work with my life as it was at that time. And as I would sit here in the dark and the fans would be going up above, I felt the spirit move around in this space. The spirit is moving around in this space today and hopefully my words will help you feel it be there. But as I sat in the dark and felt that, my anxiety gradually would lessen and I could go home and go on and face another day and try to deal with what I felt I needed to do. When I was growing up, um, I was between 6th and 7th grade, and my dad was building an addition to our house. We were getting an indoor bathroom for the first time. And as he was building, I asked him, how do you know how to do this? How do you know how to do carpentry and build something like this? And he said, my dad showed me how. And he said that I would need that skill for some time in the future. And he said, it was for such a time as this. For such a time as this has stuck with me through all the years. My dad made me learn how to change a car tire and wouldn't you know it, in 1996, Amy and I were heading back up to St. Paul and we were almost to Green Isle and I had a flat. And I was able to get out, nobody ever came along. <laughs> and I changed the tire and I thought as I changed it, my dad taught me to do this for such a time as this. When I was in high school, Marie Kraft, I shouldn't say made me do, um, but she kind of did. Um, when I was in Declam, she said, you, you should do original oratory. And I thought, original oratory? No, I don't speak in front of people, forget it, you know. But she kept encouraging me, and I don't even remember what my speech was about. And I didn't know why I was doing it, because I thought, I'm never going to speak in front of people. <laughs> I'm just not going to do that. And then I got the call to ministry for such a time as this. When I was in college, I um, emphasized classes that were on psychology, English, and advanced composition. I certainly used them as I was teaching, and even my teaching prepared me for such a time as this. Jesus today is speaking to the disciples and saying he is going to send a paraclete 
an indwelling spirit to, to strengthen you, to guide you, to teach you, to lead you, to be there to encourage you for such a time as this. Today, Pentecost comes at us and we receive the spirit, spirit anew just as we do every year on Pentecost so that we can go out and do whatever God requires of us for such a time as this. Pentecost broke barriers down. The winds of Pentecost are still blowing if you have eyes to see and ears to listen. The beginning is still continuing even among us today. Our fears can be assuaged and lessened because we know we don't go out by ourselves. We go out with the spirit in us, and that makes all the difference. In the coming months, you will be faced with different decisions. I trust that the spirit goes with you and guides those decisions, and that you have been prepared for such a time as this. I want to read one man's prayer to you today. Ours might be quite a bit the same, so. Dear God, so far today I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that. But in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed. From there on, I'm going to need more help. <laughs> we don't have rushing winds and tongues of flame today, but we do celebrate the steady, rhythmic, constant day in and out breath we have. God flows through us in our ordinary, everyday lives. We thank God for God's marvelous promise and the gift to each one of us. For God who in the spirit walks with us, who has breathed life into us, and who gives us God's spirit. It is that presence, that breath, that spirit we celebrate today with a familiar refrain. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day in your Cranberry hymnal or up on the screen.
Let us confess our faith. Is, am I on? Yeah, okay. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the glory of the resurrection dawn, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle the flame of gospel witness for leaders of the church and all people of God, that together we might preach the gospel to those with needy hearts. God, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. We pray that in carelessness we would not destroy the oceans and sky, the rivers and deserts, lakes and forests, the mountains and graselands. God, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and pour out justice in all the nations. We pray for countries racked with violence, for soldiers and civilians, for peacemakers and relief agencies, for those fighting for survival in the midst of destruction and bloodshed. God, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, give hopeful visions to the young and restful dreams to the old. We pray for those whose lives are nightmares, for those who feel distanced from your light, and also for those in need of your peace and love, especially those in this congregation who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. God, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, especially this morning, for those communities in our nation who have been affected by gun violence. We pray for those who grieve for loved ones due to senseless killings. We pray that grief may at last give way to memories of love and that healing may follow. God, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and bind us to the communion of saints who have gone before us. We remember with thanksgiving those who served and witnessed to your power. Give us the will and strength to carry on their witness. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We continue with the offering. Just one.
grace our table with your presence give us a foretaste of the feast. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of surprises, your spirit brooded over the waters at creation and lived among your chosen people in wilderness, exile, and promised land. Your spirit filled Mary's womb at the moment of Jesus' conception and came upon him like a dove at this baptism. When Christ died on the cross, your power raised him from the tomb on the third day. And that same evening, he breathed your forgiving grace on those who had deserted him. On the day of Pentecost, you sent your spirit upon the fearful disciples, filling them with fire, with power, with wonder and joy, and making them your church. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. God of comfort and strength, we look to your Holy Spirit to be with us in sorrow and in contentment, in crisis and in abiding stillness. Come among us now through the power of your Spirit, that we may be transformed into your image, and that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at the supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry and all who are thirsty, come. We welcome everyone forward for communion. Children may receive a blessing and bread. You may be seated.
Please rise for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, and that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
Paul today. Um, it's been a pleasure to be with you. I'll stay for a while afterwards. Um, I just have to tell you that within a week of Roseanne getting in touch with me and my making a commitment to you, I had a number of calls, one coming from Emmanuel in New Auburn, one coming from Fields of Grace, and uh, some of my regular summer fill-in pulpit supply in the Twin Cities, so y your timing was impeccable. <laughs> so good to be with you. Have a good week.